Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Okay, we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. 13 reasons why you are waking up with pain, and we're gonna show you how to stop it. 13, kind of yep. like a baker's dozen. Yep, there you Lucky go. Lucky 13, I gotta like it. Uh, we're gonna show you how to stop it with proper bed positioning. Sure, So there's very some common support. reason why you get up sore is because you've been laying awkwardly. Yeah, something's been going wrong at night. Right, so, eight hours away and there, a lot of things can happen. If you are new to our channel, by the way, if you that are. was really not a segue, but it just was kind of clumsy, wasn't Say it? Say no more. Uh, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Uh, subscription button here or here. Also, please like us on Facebook. We mm. want to be liked. Yes. Um, and also, there's a reason to do so. We often are giving away stuff. Today, we're actually giving away a physio ball or stability ball or exercise ball, whatever you want to call them. Not the little one, the big ones. The big ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be showing you live how to, to use those. I see Lonnie's, she's panning up. She's catching them. Oh, good. So, okay, here we go. Oh, she's here we go. Out. Number That's one. The, number one. Number one is actually one of the reasons you might be ready, waking up with uh, pain is if you are having severe, constant pain, that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. there, there's something then medically you maybe need to have checked out. Sure. So see your doctor. Yeah, see your doctor. There's some things I don't want to say what scary things could be possible. It may be, not be, but you, you know you, you need to check out things right. checked out if you're having severe pain at night. First one, if you're having neck pain, this one one of the reasons people get neck pain is when they sleep on their stomach, because what happens when you sleep on your stomach? You're turning your head all the way one way or the other. It's hard to get away from that, isn't it? Brad? Yeah. Unless you have like a donut you're sleeping in. Right. And when you got your joints all the way to the end, they don't like it. There's no other way to put it. They, they, they're they're going to put a lot of stress right. on the joints. It's okay for a little bit, but prolonged periods, uh, you're likely going to make them sore. And you're right. It's okay for a little bit, Brett. Right. I, I end up on my stomach sometimes mm -hmm. for short periods of time. Yeah. I, I don't end up with trouble. A lot of headaches uh, can be caused by sleeping right. on your stomach. Now, I know there are some stomach sleepers out there. They say they sleep on them all the time, but some people can get away with it, but oftentimes... Yeah, you don't. All right, another reason for neck pain is if you're sleeping on your back with too many pillows. Mm. Want to give me one more, Brad? Yes. T take this one. I like the color. So, it's the same color. <laughs> so that was a you're joke, Bob. Sleeping on your back, and look at me. Now my head is forward like we, this. We got to get it so they can see. Yeah, see nothing but pillow there. You want things lined up when right. you're sleeping so, as much as possible. I'm exaggerating. Right. Here, but if your head is up like this, if you're watching TV or something, get rid of the TV or get rid of a pillow or two. So get, get down where you need. If to you be. sleep on your back consistently, you should only have one thin pillow. That way, your ears are lined up with your shoulders. Everything's all lined up, and you're going to be less likely to end up, wake up with back pain. If you sleep on your side, now, however. Now look at this, there's a gap here. And so now I'm like this. So you do want to use a thicker pillow right. or double up your pillow. Double it up. Or use two pillows when you're on your side. There you go. So that, that covers pretty much the neck issue, Brad. The, yep, the majority. If there's a few other little tricks, but uh, that's the big picture stuff. So a lot of people are side sleepers and they end up waking up with shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. And Brad and I have talked about this in the past. It's amazing to us how many people are having like pretty severe shoulder pain and we ask them which position do you sleep in at night they sleep on that shoulder yeah right <laughs> so <laughs> ideally you know one you don't sleep on that shoulder but let's right. say you just can't do it you you can't sleep without sleeping on that shoulder yep. well we've got a suggestion for you you're going to take another pillow or a throw pillow we, we might get by with that some a little firmer oftentimes yeah. works better and you're going to place it right there and look what we've created here brad what, it looks like a gap. Yep, it's a gap a or a valley. canal. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is put your arm right in this gap. I just showed this to a patient. She loved it. And, and now I'm not putting as much stress on the shoulder. And if you want to even take a little more stress off the shoulder, Brad, lean back a little bit like yep. this. Now I'm off the point of the shoulder. And if you slide that shoulder yep. forward a little bit, there you go. So you might put a pillow behind you then. I know it takes a lot of pillows, but, um, you know, this will take, you don't want to be on the point of the shoulder, we call it. That right there. Yeah, I'm on the meaty part now, the back part on the shoulder blade itself. Right now, let's say you want to, you, you, you're going to listen to us, and you're not going to sleep on that shoulder. You're going to, you're going to sleep on your other side. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to, well, I got my mic on this side. Oh, um, let's, let's go back to this side. Let's say, let's say this is the painful shoulder now, this one is. Yep. 
Okay, so you decide you're going to listen to us. You're not going to sleep on the painful shoulder. Here's the painful shoulder. Ah, what you're going to yeah. do instead now, because you want that supported. Some people sleep with it up here, Brad. Right. But the easiest thing to do is take one pillow and put it here. You want to grab that other yeah, pillow, Brad? This is, yeah, you're going to have to make a trip to the store for the pillow yeah. or, or take them from your children. They don't probably That's right. Them. They don't need them. So you're going to take this pillow and stick it in the armpit. Now, it's really important to have the two here, Brad, because what happens with this, it goes down like that. Yeah. So with, with the two, this really puts it in a nice position. I, I've had a lot of people that had tried, you know, oh, yeah, I hugged a pillow, but it didn't help. But if they did this extra step, right. then it did help. You get that a little more abduction on the shoulder, take some stress off. Just the position of it. If you've got a sore shoulder, uh, when you're laying there all night, it, a little bit can make a big difference. Yeah, these, just, these minor adjustments yep. can make a big deal. And it's one of those things that you're going to like it, and you're going to say, oh, that feels good. I slept good for the first time in a long time. All right, the next one, Brad, is if you're having, you're waking up with symptoms in your hand, um, and, you know, it could be carpal tunnel. Um, the, some of the same things apply to that, Brad. You don't want to sleep with the arms over your head. Right. Because that's going to make it worse. You don't want to sleep with your arm, you know, underneath you like this or with the arm curled like this. Right. And, you know, it can be here or wherever, but if, if you sleep with your wrist in a, in position, that's going to put pressure on the, on the carpal tunnel on the and the nerves, nerve. and you're going to wake up the numbness, the tingling, all those symptoms. So what you can do is just get a just buy a, a, a wrist splint that's not real expensive, but it's comfortable. You can sleep with all night. And you know my wife does this when her carpal tunnel acts up. She's wearing her, her wrist splints at night, and she doesn't do it very often. Um, but it and works I don't well. think you need to have anything made. You can go to, to yeah, a big don't... box store, and they yeah. have the ones that you can right off the shelf. Just keep the wrist in the middle. In the middle, don't be this way or this right, way. And right. So yeah. give it a shot. Yeah, you could take some popsicle sticks with some duct tape, maybe. There we go. <laughs> like, Brad, yeah, you know, I'm always thinking, Mr. You know. Handy. Okay, now let's go to the back, Brad. Let's say um, with back pain, you're you're sleeping on your side a lot. One thing you might try is you can take a roll towel. Or they actually have these made for it too. Um, but you can take a roll towel, or you can have a. It's a this, sleep roll. A sleep roll mm -hmm. by McKenzie. And it, you know, when I'm on my side like this, Brad, you can see there's a little bit of a gap here. Yeah. And depending on how big your hips are, and uh, you know, um, like a, a woman might have a little wider hips. Right. So you can actually put the towel in there and and lay on your side here, and it'll take some of the stress yeah. off the back. Just above the belt, it fills that spot, and so that the spine does not curve and put stress on it. Uh, you can try that. You don't have to have a sleep roll. You can roll up a towel and do it. Uh, these work a little bit better usually. You can roll up a sheet too and sure. take it all the way around you and tie it on. Sure. And I'll show you in a second why you might want to do that. Okay. But you can also, Brad, the other thing, if you're on your side a lot, you may want to put a pillow between the oh, legs. Oh, yeah. It does, you know, when I when the pillow's not there, I am rotating my spine, mm -hmm. and it's putting a little stress on it, so you can go ahead and take the stress off by right, doing this. Right, If you're a back sleeper, so that's where, again, you could use the rolled towel, or but if you have a sheet around you, like this, tied in place, and that's what this wool is made for. You, you could. Oh, uh, there you go, you got it. Right yeah. You there can you pin go. it in place. Now when you roll onto your back, it's giving you support in the arch there, too, because right. a lot of times, that arch collapses, and it feels better to have a little support in exactly. there. Exactly. you got that lumbar support. So the other thing you may want to try with, we've had a lot of people that have had luck with this, Brad, is the wedge. And you may oh. want to talk about that because you just oh. were using it, it As a matter night. of fact, Sunday I did something really silly, but I'm good for that. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a triathlon in the morning, and then I rotated the tires on my car, and I did some lawn mowing. And I had a really sore back because of the... Funny, Sunday was a bad day for me, too. Yeah. I, I tweaked my back on Sunday, and I, I can go back, and I can and tell you exactly what I did, too, why I, why I did it. So I so. laid down, and I put a cold pack under my back, and then that night, this is exactly how I slept. What I didn't is this to... called now, Brad? Is it, would be leg just, wedge. Leg wedge. Leg so wedge. If, you, if you Google this, leg wedge. Yep. Um, um, and this one was an inexpensive <sighs> one. This was like 24 bucks yep, or something 24, like that. Yeah, 24 uh, You have to get... You know, get one that looks like this. It has to have the angle like this. Yes. But go get that other yeah. wedge so they don't get confused. Because if they buy the wrong one, it will not. You will not. It'll be not happy. work. Yeah. So this is just a regular wedge. 
This is a wedge that you might use underneath you like this. Right. And if you want to watch TV. Right. But this one has oh. the angle here, and then it's flat on top. And that's what you need to have because that's that's what's going to make it a lot more comfortable. I would say with people with back pain that come into clinic, 80 to 90% of them are extremely happy when I put this under their legs. Uh, it helps their back lean and on their back. The other thing is I, wanna, I, I think you should make sure you don't have a saggy mattress. If, you're, if your mattress has been you know, quite old, what you might try to see if it takes away some of your back pain is put it on the floor sure. and see if, if, if it feels yeah. better and then it may be time for you to go buy a new mattress. Th that's where it helps. They say you can rotate your mattress yeah. or flip it. It makes them last longer. You can get on the, uh, you the know, other the side of it. Exactly. If you're having knee pain at night, um, you can try sleeping with the pillow between your legs sure. and your underside. This might also help for knee pain, Brad, um, this one. Oh, sure, yeah. Because, again, the knees don't like to be in a closed pack position, yep. which is uh, all the way straight. Like that. Yeah, so if you sleep on your back, it might feel better if the knee is, is slightly right. bent. The difference from here to here on that knee yeah. is also very... Matter of fact, my friend just had a meniscus surgery, and he felt much better laying on his back with this position. Exactly. Makes you know, sense. For the especially, first week or so. Especially if you're a back sleeper. So the final pain thing that you might be waking up with is plantar fasciitis. And with plantar fasciitis, that's pain on the bottom of your foot. Generally, it's happening right, right here on the heel is where yep. you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. And what we have found quite often, what helps besides doing the stretches that we recommend, is to wear a splint. And uh, the splint here, what it's going to do is it's going to put a slight stretch on your fascia the bottom of your foot all night long. And, and that way when you wake up in the morning, it, it won't have tightened down again. And when you step on it, it breaks open. So you, know, you wanna make sure you wear a splint like this. And this actually adjusts so that it can pull tighter and pull it more this way. I don't like this particular splint. There's one that's a lot more uh, easier to use. It's more, it's not as bulky. Adjustment. See how, see how he's pulling that foot? Yeah. And you have to watch because if you pull it too tight, you won't be able to sleep. It's, it's, yeah. you, know, you, you have to be able to deal the, with it. The, if you wake up in the morning and that first weight-bearing step is really a painful, almost for certain this is going to get rid of that problem. Yeah, with plantar fasciitis, I always tell the three S's, Brad. You stretch, you put your shoes on before you get out of bed, and you wear the splint. Mary? Three S's. S-S-S. Isn't that... An acronym for something else? I don't know. Oh, is that SOS? Yeah, probably SOS. <laughs> Anyways, once again, we continue to help. Yeah, we can fix just about anything. Pain, you know, pain-free and vibrant, and except for what one thing, Bob. We can't fix a broken heart. Right. Even well, even the foot splint won't work on that. Yeah. But we're still working. We're working on, on yeah, it. Yeah, we're gonna continue until we're never gonna get. But is what I'm trying to say. All right. Thanks. I want to make sure that's clear. Thanks. <laughs>